Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Get ready for Gnosis. Well, my continuing series on radionic pr practitioners, past, present, and future, maybe. Um, we want to talk about uh, one of the most famous and prolific uh, researchers, and that's George Del Lawar. Um, he has... Um, <clears throat> been an uh, active in the um, radionic industry for many years. Um, <clears throat> he is rel relatively modern and set up a, a research organization in Oxford. Of course, he's another Brit here. Um, he was born in 1904 in Sussex, England, educated at Brighton Technical College. He served as a captain with the British Army in the Royal Engineers. Um, he picked up the work of um, Abrams, uh, but he apparently, and of course, you know, it's always hard to verify all this, but um, he developed a rubber pad or the stick pad that people are using today. Uh, Abrams didn't have that on his units, and he used to use human patients and stroke their abdominals, etc., which of course made it very difficult. So the basically our modern uh, stick pad, uh, we can pretty much say came from uh, Della War. He also used blood samples and um, was uh, a um, made a lot of machines. So you can still find his machines today. So he was active or lived until 1969. And here we go, another um, uh, actual person that only lived to be 64 again, born in 1904. So uh, as some person actually brought up, it may be interesting. I mean, this is when the Industrial Revolution was hitting and there was a lot of toxins and poisons and manufacturing going on. Uh, but this is this kind of strange time where a lot of people uh, died young. From the late 1800s into the early 1900s, um, people tended to die young. But uh, the average is still way up there. There, and people were living into their 80s and 90s uh, from people like Jimmy Cagney to lots of other uh, movie stars and people of uh, note, Isaac Newton, etc. All these people lived to be a ripe old age. Um, so it's hard to say, but uh, practitioners of radionics uh, accept... Um, Hieronymus all kind of died in their 60s, but they were all born in this particular time. So what do we make of that? I don't know, but I have a problem with that because Abrams said that um, Albert Abrams, the famous inventor of the black box, uh, said how great his black box was, yet he died of pneumonia at 60 years old. What are we to make of that? Uh, if you have medical devices and you can't live properly or cure yourself, there's a problem. So he founded a research laboratory in Oxford, England, Delaware Laboratories. He produced a lot of newsletters. I believe he technically, or the Radionic Association of England, uh, they took over his facilities or he founded that. I'm not sure what the connection there is exactly. But he put out a bunch of newsletters which are still available. He also wrote a book uh, on his actual theories of this. And this is just a short introduction. I'm going to talk a lot about him, his theories, and go into his famous book, New Worlds Beyond the Atom, which was written in 1959. Now, this really discusses his theories um, of... Uh, radionics in the world in general. He also wrote another book. Uh, of course, he wrote a bunch of newsletters or his organization, you know, Crop Yields by Radionic Simulation or Stimulation. So, <clears throat> so this is definitely um, a person who was heavily involved in this, produced a lot of instruments, was doing all this research. A really valuable man. When he died, his wife took over for a few years and, and ran the organization. As he said, his publications, books. Uh, well, trying to find his books um, is a little difficult. The New World Beyond the Atom, uh, they can be very expensive, but I think they're online and you can obtain these um, uh, free. 
uh, out there. I believe that uh, we have this in our library for all access members. Uh, so the whole idea is um, this is a very interesting book that goes into his philosophy. He was granted two patents in the UK for therapeutic apparatuses. Um, apparatuses? Apparatuses? Rabbis? Apparatus? So he did get two patents from the front, from the uh, the British. So uh, two separate ones, and he got a French patent as well. So, um, you know, there was something there. They were verified by the scientific authorities of that time. So, you know, don't let people tell you different about this whole field. Because it's, uh, again, we have the same old problems of the medical mafia, an industry that makes trillions of dollars now. Um, is all based on making money and not curing you. It's really sad. Patent medicines are based on, uh, for, and it states in the law, for the treatment of symptoms. Nobody's trying to cure anything. Sad. Um, so he ran into this as well, and he was taken to court. Now, the gossip is, and we're always trying to verify all these things, but the gossip was is that he was taken to court. And um, because of um, uh, the medical community tried to persecute him. Um, because he was not a doctor. And, um, but he was able to be uh, released from this uh, legal case because uh, the judge's wife was sick and he cured her using his machines. Well, this is again, pretty strong um, uh, validation of his work. His work has also been validated by the famous uh, psychic uh, radionic type nurse, Francine, um, uh, what was her name again here? It was also claimed that uh, Delaware stated that the actual boxes, which are very simple and non-electric. I mean, I think all of Delaware's instruments were non-electric. They have your classic um, uh, roof drown, uh, Abrams to a degree. We're not sure what exactly was in Abrams, but roof drown use these same simple flow patterns, as I call them, where you have a series of potentiometers that are connected to each other with wires, and there's nothing else in there. There's a stick plate, there's a witness plate, sometimes there's an antenna type, and that's it. And he stated that these were psychic tuning devices, and that's it. So there really wasn't ele anything electrical in this, and while they make some sense, particularly as a kind of uh, circuit for a old type of radio, these crystal radios of the past, they kind of look like that. Uh, but of course, he didn't have hardly anything in it. Um, other manufacturers did. Um, so, and there were some electric and amplified ones, which is very important to get strength through these units, particularly in modern times. But he saw his units as nothing more than psychic tuners. And this, of course, was uh, given to, this concept was given to him from a Roof Drown and others who had similar units. Now, to verify this, he also, his one major new accomplishment was the fact of his invention of a psychic photograph or a psychic uh, photography, a psychic camera 
which is very, very interesting. And um, this psychic camera was witnessed by Francine Farley. Now, again, there's a lot of talk about this camera and um, how he was able uh, to take pictures at distances and everything else. And these photographs, which are taken of um, oftentimes human organs, uh, he was able to produce very clearly but it was a psychic process again um, that this was all done and uh, few people could do it. Apparently, there was one person in particular that used to run the camera, not De La War himself, but I'm, I'm assuming he could run it as well. But one of his associates ran it and he was the only one that could make it work, kind of. Well, Francis Farley, and this is, makes this even more critically important, um, wanted to take pictures. And what he did was have her uh, take the camera apart, touch all the different panels, and then put it back together again. And she was able to then, because her energy combined with the camera, and we're talking about consciousness machines here. Radiac machines are consciousness machines. Um, she was able then to take good, clear pictures. Now, apparently Ruth Drown tried similar things unsuccessfully. Her pictures were very blurry and hard to make anything out. So it's quite interesting. Um, again, we have a kind of uh, radionic camera that apparently did work. Um, very interesting. And these cameras were around for a while. He also, uh, not only was the, is the camera there, which I just went over, and of course, this camera later apparently got into the hands of uh, Marcel Vogel, who used the camera and got good results with it himself. So it went on to other people. He had his supporters. He, um, he had people that worked with him. So he did invent some very interesting, besides his black boxes for medical purposes, included a thought energy detector, an art apparatus, uh, Race, uh, appreciation apparatus, whatever that is, a psychic uh, psycho plot, whatever that is as well, and a vibrograph which detects um, molecular changes, which is very important because that's what you're doing. So he invented a lot of very advanced technologies and they all apparently were verified and worked to some degree. Again, all this stuff, it's hard to know. And even if you get his original reports that says that all of this is true and they got good results, well, you're going to have other people that tell you differently. So it was quite interesting. Um, there has been um, a lot of a lot of material left by him, which others haven't. And that's one nice thing about his organization. And most of these radionic people, of course, now we're talking about like Abrams. We're talking about a hundred years ago. So the actually finding of documents um, and being able to get to them and information is near impossible. There are a certain amount out there, but we just don't know. With his laboratories, I believe that most of his newsletters are, were saved, and these can be obtained uh, on CDs at low cost. Um, so uh, this is very, very interesting, uh, but you have to read there. And this takes a lot of researchers, a lot of time, and a lot of money, which is why we always ask people to support us. If you expect to get this hardcore information and go through these things step by step, well, you're going to uh, have a serious uh, problem doing so on your own. That's why uh, people have to be paid to do this. There has to be an organization that knows what they're talking about. So when they read these things, they can interpret them properly. Uh, all of this is very important, and there needs to be a professional organization that does this. Apparently, uh, nobody really has done this. People are tr have tried in the past. And uh, there is a certain amount of information that you can get from the Radionic Association in England. But the bottom line is that it is minuscule. It is tiny. Um, and it is uh, all of these organizations are way underfunded. So as such, uh, there's a major uh, problem with getting information out. So um, we would, um, of course like to get a hold of even more stuff and have the time 
would have uh, have the time to bring out this kind of information. So, I mean, with that, it's very fascinating. And, of course, we're going to be giving further reviews and talk about the rest of his um, technologies. We have many of his boxes, which are going to his original boxes, which we'll open up and show you the insides of and show you how simplistic they are. He made small, little, simplistic boxes, uh, but apparently they worked well, just like Ruth Drown. So here we get again into these non-electric flow pattern machines, um, which of course worked in the 1960s and 50s, um, which in this day and age, uh, tend to uh, make it very difficult to break through the um, psychic fog and interference that's out there. And of course, the real interference from uh, everything that we have that's wireless. Um, so it does tend to interfere with these fields, even though they're different. Um, people have tried all sorts of things to amplify their devices and most people in, in including Tansley one of the famous uh, writers and radionic and practitioners uh, ultimately came to discuss the fact that uh, these things um, the, you don't need the machine even Francis uh, Farley stated this which I totally disagree with you do need something that can analyze the energy and put it into a form that can be used which is a symbolic energy form in the shape of a number code otherwise known as a rate so these are irreplaceable now how much of this can be now psychic work and psychic work alone healing people uh, has been done for thousands of years and uh, bankston bankston bang stin uh, is a famous uh, researcher today doing basically hands-on and psychic healing has been able to heal people without using any kind of apparatus or anything else just by making psychic contact so even in this day and age even with the very very sick people we have today he's been able to cure hundreds of people of course he has a fair amount of failures but it has an awful lot of success and nothing is being used except the person's mind so, I mean, these kind of things are staggering in their nature and how they could profoundly change the world. But there's no money in it. You can heal yourself. You can manifest what you want. Well, you're a danger to society. You're an independent. You're a person who is independent on the system and using everything that they want to force you to use. So this is why this technology never really got passed. If you don't think these are real pressures out there, well, you're living in a fantasy world, and most people are. They're living in an urban legend of information, fake facts, faker religions, and it just goes on and on with all the nonsense that we've been told as a race of people. Uh, so when someone comes along that's different, well, these people need to be persecuted. So um, he was able to function and uh, put out all this stuff, collect a lot of information. He has a his information and what he believed in and his background um, and what he did to a large degree has been recorded. There's a fair amount of books, of course, even from Abrams, but there are more technical medical books into odd treatments. There isn't a lot written on, quote, radionics because uh, Abrams wasn't really using radionics. We then go to Ruth Drown, etc., and she has a few of her books. But the bottom line is that uh, things are still very sketchy, and there is no research saying, well, I had 50 patients this month and 40 of them were cured uh, and the rest weren't. So there's, there, we don't have that. We don't have people writing down what the illness was and how it was treated. And of course, to a large degree, you can do this in England, but none of these kind of records apparently have ever been um, uh, gone into and um, uh, verified with any kind of precise data. And of course, this is the big problem. And conveniently, it hasn't been done. But, you know, when you start doing stuff and going against the medical establishment, you're going to get yourself in trouble. So most radionic practitioners live in kind of a fear. Um, even though it's legal in England, uh, oftentimes you have to work with the doctor and the doctors are not going to support you because they're going to get um, attacked by the regular medical people and the industry that they're in. So it's a very complicated situation and that's how most things are in life. We're living in a corrupt sewer and until the corruption stops, we're never going to get ahead anywhere.
That includes with energy, health, and you name it. We're living in a horribly corrupt and controlled world down to an unbelievable degree. And these kind of people that come out, and anybody else for that matter, um, are highly persecuted. And of course, there's never good records. There are people who have been producing certain instruments for over 20 years now. And we really have nothing from them. And they're not too interested in producing facts and figures because it kind of puts their head on the chopping block. So you either buy into it or not, and um, you, you spend your money and you take your chances. Does it work for you? Does it work in general? Well, uh, we just don't know. There seems to be with radionics, and I've used it personally myself on different conditions that people have had, both metaphysical and subtle energy healing, and gotten some amazing results. There's also, like everything in life, uh, there are failures. So. Uh, it takes a lot of time and money to do this kind of research. Now, we're hoping to do this in the future, but this is all part of uh, the bigger picture of finally getting out there and supporting an organization that can help and get out there and do something. The organizations out there right now apparently seem to be doing little to nothing. Um, but that doesn't mean these things have to continue that way. Uh, we are trying to get all this information out. We have shown the multiple machines we have, and we are moving ahead dramatically in all these areas and hope to have some real answers to these machines by testing them, seeing if they actually work. So... Uh, but again, these are instruments and people have to learn to play them. Radionics isn't just a click, click, you're done. Even though they try and give you rates or numbers to put in these machines, um, which of course should take the stress out of it. And we'll certainly find out if these work to the degree that they should. So it's an exciting field, George. Uh, De La War. Um, certainly was a pioneer in his film and his uh, and his uh, in his trade. Uh, he was another person who was well educated, being a civil engineer in Oxford County as a job for a while and being educated. So this is just not another goofball. It's hard to believe that these people would go out there to make money as well. I just find this hard to believe because there just isn't that much money. So uh, is this a good way to make money selling instruments and helping people in this particular way? Well, I don't think there ever was a lot of money in it. This was something that people got into because it fascinated them. They loved it. And of course, you know, if you love something and are fascinated and believe in it, you want to start a business. And of course, he was able to do that and produce. So the fact that he was able to produce cameras and many other different uh, sensing tools uh, is amazing and wonderful. And the fact that these things are swept under the carpet like so many other discoveries is really an offense against mankind. It is horrible. And it continues to go on to this day in so many areas. It's a travesty. We are a sick group of people. We need to find any possible way to heal ourselves and especially non-invasively and non-chemically. So why could this possibly hurt anyone? It doesn't. It either works or it doesn't. Certainly, modern medicine is a giant bowl of failure. It's a stinking sieve that has produced nothing. We need to understand that life is all about energies and start using tools and instruments like this uh, to start solving, uh, solving our problems on so many levels. Well, until next time.